Master Chen Yan, an ordinary and physically feeble nun, abided by the instruction given by Dharma Master Ying Shun, who she had taken refuge under, devoted her entire life, committed to Buddhism and to all living beings. She pushed forward the ideology of humanizing Buddhist teaching and bring the Bodhisattva into the actual world. Through the various social relief works, the spirit of recognizing humanity, respect life, was realized. In 1966, Dharma Master Chen Yan led four of her disciples and 30 other at-home disciples and formed the Compassion Relief Siji Fat Association. They got actively involved in Buddhist social relief works. Since then, 32 years has passed. Under the continuous effort of all Tsuji members, this organization has written down one after another moving stories in the history of economic development of Taiwan. Under the guidance of Master Chen Yan, currently, Tsuji is mobilizing toward four major missions and the goal of one step, eight footprints. Mission of charity, mission of medicine, mission of culture, mission of education, international relief, bone marrow donation, environmental protection, community volunteer. Up to this point, Tsuji has over 5 million members in Taiwan. It also has 93 branch offices in 27 countries all over the world. It made true of the ideal of with the great love that is without boundary, we can build an earth village. Tsuji College of Medicine was established in 1994. Master Chen Yan hoped that through Tsuji's spirit of humanism is respect for all living beings she can educate outstanding doctors for the future generations. These future doctors are the ones who can care for the patients as if the patients are their own families. Siji College of Medicine invited former New Jersey Medical and Dental School pediatric professor and the Dean of Genetics Department, Dr. Li Mingliang, to be the first president of the college. Currently, Siji College of Medicine is made up of four major departments and two graduate programs. In the following year, it will be expanded to five major departments and six graduate programs. It will also change its structure and title to Siji College of Medicine, Culture, and Social Sciences. In the year of 2001, it also plans to restructure the school into Siji University. In February 1995, Mrs. Li Huimin of Changhua, Taiwan, voluntarily donated her body to Tsuji College of Medicine after she passed away. Master Chen repeatedly reminds us that the body donation of Tsuji College of Medicine must follow the principle of trustworthy for the donors, dependable for the families. Moreover, the processing of the donor's body and the anatomy class itself also showed the utmost respect for the body of the donor. This insistence on upholding the dignity of the donors won numerous recognition from the general public. Master Chen Yan and all Tsuji members made appeal to the public regarding the concept of body donation. This action became the vanguard of such trends in Taiwan. From February 1994, to May 1998. Up to 2,954 people have signed the form for voluntary body donation. 1,185 of them are male, and 1,809 of them are female. Among them, 71 have already fulfilled their wishes of donating their bodies after they pass away. 50 of them are male, 21 are female. 
Tsuji College of Medicine's anatomy class and labs are located on the second floor in our third building. Currently, there is one lecture hall which has an altar and a statue of Gray Val Bolticelva in the room. There is also an anatomy lab with clean and well-lighted dissection table and efficient air ventilation system. The body processing lab includes embalming room, cocooning room, and storage room. All the processes follow the strict principle of having the utmost respect for the body donor. Great Giving Hall is where the donor's ash remains are laid to rest. Cultural Corridor serves the purpose of introducing the visitors the cultural background of body donation. In the process of planning is the Meditate Wisdom Museum, where the life stories of the donors will be on display for the future generations to reminisce about. In September 1996, Tsuji College of Medicine Anatomy courses officially began for the first time. Even though it was the very first time, but through the combined efforts of Professor Chen Yinglong and all Tsuji members, it has developed its distinct teaching and learning style. The uniqueness of the anatomy courses in Tsuji includes a few things. First of all, a clean and bright anatomy lab. Secondly, all the body donations were made voluntarily. Thirdly, Siji asked the students to be most respectful to the cadaver. Fourthly, there are two memorial ceremonies during spring and fall. An efficient teaching style. On average, every four students will get to learn from one cadaver. Siji emphasizes mostly on the education of medical students' character. On the point of having utmost respect for the donors, and his or her family members. Tsuji College of Medicine sets up a body donation network. Palliative caring teams is also formed all over the country. Tsuji College of Medicine is also promoting the concept of sharing medical resources to bring forward the same respect for body donation. Students who took the class wrote to their cadaver teachers as they laid the cadaver teachers to rest. In the future, on the road to be a doctor, I shall not be alone. I will have a companion. Other than myself, there is a you deep within my heart. We can clearly feel that the professional training of medical students, when combined, with character and humanistic development can form a more complete educational curriculum. In Master Chan's talk to Tsuji members, she pointed out, in ground burial, bacteria devour the body. It is not respectful to the body. Cremation is environmentally sound, but a little too wasteful. So if you donate your body for medical research, then you're a hero in life. You're a great giving bodhisattva. This talks gives meaning to body donation. Family members of a body donor said, I'd rather have the student make 20 mistakes on my husband's body than to have them make one wrong incision on their patients in the future. This is why we're willing to donate his body for medical research. The family's wisdom and courage deserve our respect. To many of the students, the first time meeting the family members and the cadaver teachers next to the dissection table was a life-changing experience. When the students took off the white cloth that covered the face of the cadavers, the family of the donors feared that the student would be afraid of what was revealed to them. So they told the students, Kids, do not be afraid. Even though my husband does not look too good right now, but he was a kind-hearted person. 
just remember to study hard and learn from Him. Do not be afraid. He will not harm you. How brave is the family to bear the sadness that is overwhelming them. Another donor's family told the students, Children, thank you for fulfilling the wishes of my husband. I'm truly thankful. Actually, it should be the school and the students who are thankful. But such speeches coming from the family members are the most touching speeches and most powerful lesson for the students. Many donors next of kin also wrote letters during the semester to inquire and express their care about students. The students also kept up correspondence and told the families about their thoughts on the course. This is the greatest form of interaction. In the memorial ceremony, students wrote a song, The Incarnation of Bodhisattva to express their thoughts about taking such course. With a violin playing the melody, they presented the song to the family members to show the gratefulness they have toward the donor and their families. City College of Medicine also held lunch on, on the day of the ceremony so that the students and the family members could get to know each other better and moreover share their thoughts. Students were not only able to express their gratefulness, they were also able to learn more about the donor him or herself. Because of the donors, the students and the families gain a deeper sense of connection. In a letter written by students to his cadaver teacher, he wrote, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you have given me. Thank you for the knowledge you have granted me. Thank you for many and everything. Today, from the moment the casket closes, I will not see you again, ever. But I will not forget, I dare not forget, your face, your skull, your body your limbs, the blood-red heart of yours, and the blood-red veins. It was you, with your both hands, who led me into the realm of medicine. From now on, I will use the power you have granted me with my both hands and pull the sick back into the realm of health, the side that belong to life. After bidding farewell today, maybe it will be several hundred years before we meet again. However, no matter how distant the time and space, how vast the world, I deeply believe that we will not pass each other among the crowd without recognizing each other. Just because a year ago, someone linked our fate together. I wish in next life, you will again be my best teacher, my best friend, the companion of my soul. Finally, all I want to say is thank you. Thank you. From these touching words written by the students, it is not difficult for us to sense that these body-given bodhisattvas have already acquired the status of pioneers in medical education. For those of us who are involved in the realm of medicine, a new era of medical development can be expected.
江心底。